Yes, and you're going to be participating from uh, Clubhouse. Clubhouse. Not, so you won't appear yes. on the screen. So another obvious reason why we can't do hands raised today. So, <laughs> so where are you, George? I'm in. Where am I? I'm in a state of excitement. <laughs> um, what platform uh, right i'm on oh uh, you see you got to be more specific what platform i'm on twitter on the spaces twitter okay i was thinking of pulling up windows of at least like the twitter space yep you can do that just to see what's going on inside of all that and so yeah i'll, I'll do that you could park yourself as a speaker i believe and mute your uh, i mean park, park yourself in there and that will bring people in on the Twitter, right? No reason not to do that for everybody that has to join from another platform. That's true until we run it out is. of speakers. So, um, well, right, but they don't even have to be a speaker. They can just be in the room and that will bring their crowd oh, in. That's true. Good, good point. Chris. Everybody should be on Twitter if you're on a different platform because you, you still pull people in. That's right. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll get going. I just in. want to say real quick this is revolution. Holy cow, this is fun. Okay, I'll be quiet. <laughs> Okay, like, I think uh, you'd like to be brought... called Rev or Revolution. Uh, Rev is or Revolution doesn't matter. Rev is fine. Uh, whatever okay. you guys want. Yeah, oh, Rev is always fine, my friend. Okay, Rev's good. Rev it'll be. Just of, every second counts. <laughs> okay, are we? I don't see uh, <laughs> Gia. We're missing Gia. Um, but she may not make it today. Um. Help me out, folks. Are we missing anybody else from that card list? I think we got most of everybody. Okay, I think we can probably get started. So a real quick intro before George, uh, as my co-host, runs through the speakers today. Thank you for coming to this, the first show. It's been, um, it's been fun organizing this. This is not something that me, I want to take on as myself for the entire run of this. And um, if you're listening to this and you are really involved in social audio and social audio is your passion, please DM one of the speakers today because this is not a closed club. We're not trying to be exclusive. This is just like the first time we did this. And I kind of talk to the people that I know and I am in contact with the most. So don't, I hope I, we're not hurting anybody's feelings who are listening that is, you know, big involved in social audio. Please just DM one of the speakers today. Um, because that, this is not something that we can all make all the time. We're also linking four different social audio sites. So through my profile, you're Yay. going to hear, you're going to hear Michael from, um, clubhouse and folks, when we get hello. to the, hello, thanks, Michael. We're also going to hear, uh, people from LinkedIn. Indra is our link to LinkedIn. Thanks, Indra. I really appreciate that. And then we have Rev, who's hosting a wisdom talk on wisdom right now. You'll see some profiles in the room, and it's all through the wonder of technology. My name is Jason Zakowski, and I'm the, I am the dog dad of Bunsen and Beaker. So I'm going to throw this to George for the intros, and then we'll get going. Okay. Um, so look, here's the thing. If we each take a minute or two to in introduce ourselves, we're going to eat up half the session. So instead, let's do a lightning round. One to uh, 10 to 15 seconds each. Okay, 10 to 15 seconds. I'll serve as a, uh, 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 it'll also, it, it'll also be a quick warm up uh, and demo of the interaction mode. So jump in when you're ready. Tell us your name, location, one quick thing about you that's relevant to this session today. To model it, I'll go first. I'm George Silverman, the mind skills guy in a suburb just north of New York City. I run spaces teaching the mental skills that are essential to happiness and success. Who'd like to jump in next? I'm Revolution sure. McKinnis. I am in Chicago, Illinois, and I am 100% about bringing people to my platform that we can elevate beyond. And wow, I love all the elevation I'm getting here. Hi, everybody. Um, Dr. Hi. Ladies. Go ahead. Go ahead. Dr. Sure, I'll go. Sure. Um, this is Dr. M speaking to you from uh, Michigan. I'm a physician, consultant, and founder of ThoughtWorks, incubating and accelerating human development. I hold conversations here that hopefully result in growth for anyone involved. Perfect. Hey, everyone. Hey, everybody. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Jason I'll stand by. Next, so I thought I'd jump in. So. You guys will sort it out. Go ahead. 
All right. So everyone, I'm Samantha Postman from Alberta, Canada. I live just a little bit south of uh, Jason from Bunsen Beaker, actually. Woo, woo. Yeah. And I'm the founder of uh, a recently launched online community for modern polymath called the Medici Modern Polymath Online Community. And I run spaces about polymaths as well as for business and thought leadership. Thank you. Perfect. All right, I'm really going this time. I'm Daryl with the Dashes. I'm known on Wisdom to help people optimize from the inside out. I've spent 32 years in radio broadcasting. I'm glad to be on the panel. That was six seconds. That was terrific. Thank you. <laughs> Go ahead. Next. Hello, everyone. I'm Indra Bartona, a producer in film in the film and television industry and a TV host originally from the Gold Coast of Australia, now based in Los Angeles. I am the founder of the Positivity Vibe Tribe and I run three spaces a week. Plus, I'm on all audio platforms and also YouTube, etc. Thank you so much. Hi, this is Rose Horowitz. I'm a journalist and the founder of uh, Women to Follow, which is a movement to amplify the voices of women on social media. I run uh, shows about it, uh, live stream shows, and social audio spaces. Thank you. Hello, this is Jennifer Navarrete, known as ePodcaster on Web 2 and Web 3. My focus is on podcasting on the production side, and I'm also big into Web 3. If you're a content creator and you're not looking at Web 3, you're missing out, friends. Hello, everyone. I am Dr. Jasmine Berry. I am a research scientist and fellow at the University of Michigan, but I split my time uh, between Michigan and Southern California. I also do some uh, consulting and startup work in the health tech space uh, as it relates to AI. This is Michael Sterling uh, in the call from Kansas City, and I'm on Clubhouse primarily anchoring it there. I'm an audio engineer of more than 25 years and a content creator and I help people to optimize their audio for things like social audio and, and podcasting and so on. And honestly, since college, when I was in a campus ministry and we had a program called Chats, I have loved a great conversation. So I'm really looking forward to this. Thank you. Hey, everyone. My name is Mariah Howard. I'm the founder of Made Marketing Agency, which is a full <laughs> digital marketing agency for business development and startups. And I specialize specifically working with minorities and making sure that we can sustain our businesses and close the wealth gap. Hi, I'm Jason Zakowski. I'm the dog dad of Bunsen and Beaker, the science dogs on social media. I'm host of the science podcast and I run two spaces a week. One where I bring science to everybody and the other, we build a pet community. I'm excited wow. to be here. And kept it within the time, even with sound effects. Cool. <laughs> is is that, I think that's everybody. Am I wrong? We're good. That's everybody okay. who showed up today. Okay. Picking up on what Michael said about conversation, you know, a lot of people, including me, have said conversation, the art of conversation is dying or damn near dead. I hope to prove myself wrong today. And everybody else who agrees with me about that to be wrong. Uh, hopefully we'll have some, uh, re really have a great conversation and serve as an example to uh, to revive the art of conversation. Uh, we are going to be in interactive mode today. That doesn't mean that every one of these has to be in interactive mode. But uh, Jason and I thought we'd try it. We'd start it out that way. Uh, not all of you are used to, used to it, so just a couple of quick words about it. Uh, don't wait to be called on. Jump right in. You know when you have something to say. Jason and I don't. Uh, try to build on the idea of the previous speaker if you can. Uh, jump in at the appropriate at the time you feel appropriate, not just that we feel. Uh, so talk to each other, not just to Jason and myself. Uh, ask each other questions, share ideas, you know, acknowledge each other's contributions, build on their ideas, and respectfully give us your different perspective. Uh, when you talk, again, to repeat, use your first name at the beginning or end or middle of your first sentence or so. This is George. And I want us to add to what Harry just said, okay? Uh, let's have a discussion, not just serial speech making or uh, long free associational monologues. My, my, my uh, phrase that you've heard many times is keep it pithy with a TH, concise. Hey, rich. remember the chat down there, folks. Yep, yep, exactly. Good, good point. Rev, he forgot to use his name. We'll, we'll remind people for a while, and then, then they'll pick it up. I am revolution. Uh, Remember uh, the chat there, folks. 
Uh, okay, so let's ke keep it all, you know, concise, rich, short, to the point. Uh, okay, so let's get to the first question. Anything else, uh, Jason, before we get to the question? No, I am. I just cool. helped organize this. I'm excited to hear what people have to say. Yeah, ha and uh, three cheers for for Jason for organizing this. This was a monumental technical task that um, – some of us don't even begin to understand and I've got a mixer and I'm pretty sophisticated with it. And I don't know, still don't know how the hell you're doing all this. Uh, so <laughs> it's all good. I'm, I'm the magician, but I, 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 I love to watch other people's magic and uh, you definitely did a magic thing today. Okay. So let's get to the first question uh, again, jump right in whenever you think your contribution is most relevant. Uh, and um, so our, in general, our topic is our differences or our strengths. But as most of us have learned in spaces, naming a topic isn't quite enough. So let's focus it down to a question, which is this. Uh, most people believe that our strengths are in our common purposes and our goals and our coordinated action. Okay, everybody working together, in other words. So how can our differences possibly be our strengths? In other words, how can we constructively use our differences and take advantage of our differences as we work together. I'm going to shut up and let you talk. I'm going to jump in on that, George, because this group right here, you heard all of us introduce ourselves, and you can tell that we are not That's, only from various locations. Yes, this is Jennifer Navarrete, e-podcaster. This is not only the difference between who we are, but also the commonalities. And the commonalities bring us together together but the differences actually help inform and educate us in new and enlightening ways. And I have a much broader and expansive awareness and understanding because of the differences that we have, which started with the things that are the similar, but the differences have, have actually helped elevate all of us. How? You or anybody else who wants to jump in? How do the differences do that? I'll jump in here. Uh, I think the differences uh, are really striking among us. I mean, we're all on social media, but we all bring um, <clears throat> different uh, strengths to it. So I'm a journalist. I'm a writer. I ask questions. I, you know, I'm great at interviewing. Uh, when I listen to Indra, you know, on her spaces, I'm hearing things about mindfulness. And um, so, I, you know, we're all by, you know, we're all exploring uh, and further discovering our strengths as we go. This is a revolution. I also just want to say we are on wisdom and, and all these other platforms. These differences are literal, too, and we're on different places we have access. It makes us incredibly strong. Hmm. Mm -hmm. I, this hey, is Indra. Michael. I, you know, to, uh, Indra, go Indra ahead, was, please. Indra is first by a split second. Yeah, go ahead. Um, thanks so much. It's Indra Bartona here. I wanted to just point out something that, raised, uh, that Rose just raised is – I feel like our differences are also in our journey spiritually and emotionally as well. And that's something that uh, I focus on and I love to develop and learn from others. And because of even our ages in this space, I mean, if we look at everybody here, there, there is a difference in ages. We're all evolving and learning at a different rate. And I think that is something really important for us to embrace and to have that advantage um, from all of us. And I think that's why we all come together so nicely in this space. This is uh, Daryl with Thanks, the Dash. It's, if I can just uh, add this also, uh, with programming like artificial intelligence, or let's just take it back to like fixing something in the house. If you have a, a container full of, you know, four different nails and four different bolts and four different screws, you're very limited to what you can actually repair or to construct. However, if you have literal ultimate diversity of nails, screws, and bolts, you can fix almost anything. And so where diversity um, is very, very important, and the same as going back to AI, the more uh, information you have to put into the model, the better the model can be. So these are all reasons to have more diversity and uh, both ends of the perspective so that we can actually have more tools to uh, utilize to come up with the best possible answer. Mm -hmm. If I can tag on to that. just said, this is Michael. And I think, um, it was Mike, I think of food. 
Ahead, yeah, I, I think of food in, in a similar way. Like if you just if you really love hamburgers and you're always eating hamburgers <laughs> and, and you've, <laughs> right. you've eaten every hamburger that's out there and you have your favorites and you try different hamburgers, that's great. But sometimes if you try other foods, other styles of foods, you're going to find that they have different flavors and they might have different nutrition and all sorts of wonderful things. But if you just don't include what's different, what's other than what you're used to, you're never going to experience that and, and find the benefit from it. Thanks. This is Michael. Mm -hmm. This is Samantha Postman here. And I'd like to say that um, I think a good way to think about differences and strengths is to see each other's gaps as opportunities to fill and not deficiencies in each other. So when we're working together, and a lot of us work together in a team, when I need somebody to talk to my audience about something that's Web3 related, I'm going to call on Jennifer because I know she can fill my gap. But she also could come to me and say, hey, I know your audience wants to know about Web3. Um, I'd love to I'd love to fill that gap for you. So then together we're much stronger. And that's true of everyone else uh, in this in this community. Uh, Samantha, I do want to fill this gap. This is Jennifer. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Dr. Is... N does a good job with Web3 too. So there's a number of us who can do that, but different. Like when when uh, Dr. M does it, he's got a di he fills a different gap than the way that Jennifer does it. So we all have space. <laughs> And this is George. I, I, I like to apply for the role of skeptic in that whole thing. So we need skeptics, too. Mm -hmm. Dr. Ramos. Sure. Love it. Hey, um, I, I really <laughs> loved uh, what Daryl said, because, um, you know, when, when uh, the topic is differences, I think of that as diversity. And I was thinking um, when we talk about a topic, um, diversity means that we come from different perspectives and a discussion with uh, um, uh, people involved of varied perspectives results in a deeper understanding on the topic. And when we, when we think about um, trying to come together as diverse people to solve a problem, it also um, uh, results in the consideration of further solutions than if our perspectives were narrower and so ultimately a better solution in any way that you work at. So complementing, supplementing, and potentiating. Yeah, this yes. is a... Barry, and um, I also liked what Daryl said to echo Dr. M's point uh, uh, regarding uh, AI, especially because that is my field. But I look at this uh, very much so as a hive mind. Uh, you know, we all have uh, different traits and characteristics and attributes that, you know, uh, Samantha said that sometimes we need to fill in the gaps. Uh, but, you know, one thing I noticed is that, you know, as a researcher, one of the things that makes a great researcher in the tech space is the ability to collaborate with others and network with other people because it's it's very much almost impossible to know everything about everything. And when you have people around you that you can uh, learn from or you know fill in the gaps or uh, become an extension of yourself in a sense uh, that kind of makes you better and you can always lean on that. So I, I have leaned on uh, many people in this community so far like Mariah, Dr. M and Rev, uh, you know, for their their tech insight. And that has made me a better uh, person as far as, uh, you know, how to uh, form questions and, and relate uh, different tech concepts uh, to people in the general public. So I'm forever grateful for that. This is Revolution, George. I'm just jumping in to let everybody know if you are listening to this, please share this out. We are on multiple platforms. Keep this dialogue going, but share it out and grow this thing. I'm having a blast. Thank you so much, and let me build on that. Uh, if anybody who just joined us, you may not be used to such a fast-paced conversation. Uh, these are all very experienced audio, um, you know, audio discussion facilitators. I use that the word facilitators quite purposely to distinguish from hosts and moderators. The people on here really are quite, you know, adept, and so they're really facilitators. Uh, so we are, the, I think the politically correct, actually the phrase politically correct is politically incorrect, incorrect now. But the, politi the politically incorrect phrase used to be all chiefs and no Indians. So I don't know what the current phrase is. I apologize for the, the wrong phrase, but you get the point. We're all chiefs and no Indians, uh, and that works fine um, and is working fine. But what I'd love to do now is, unless anybody has any other general points, uh, I'd love to hear some suggestions specifically for how do you turn the differences that you perceive in other people, how do you turn that to advantage? How do you, how do you benefit from it 
rather than um, than than do something unconstructive like get angry or argue or whatever. Um, I, 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 I'll start out just by example. I, I think one great tip for when somebody says something absolutely outrageous that contradicts all your values or is patently utter and utterly ridiculous is to remind yourself, this is an intelligent person. The reason that person believe, believes that, I wonder why that person is saying that. So the, so the tip that I have for you is replace anger with curiosity. Because anger and fear, it, it's very hard for anger and fear to coexist with curiosity. So when you're tempted to go off, get curious rather than argue. I'd love to hear other tips because as some of you know, I can certainly learn from this kind of thing myself. Hey, this is Jason. Can I start? I'll start. Please. So uh, I'm acutely aware of taking somebody's differences uh, and, and looking at their side of the, the coin because our account is a science communication account. And yeah, um, and like science is the all about that. Yeah, well, and also during the pandemic, we were very pro um, public health, and that caused a lot of anger with some of the people that followed us right, and people that right. didn't. And initially, you cannot ever find a middle ground if you meet anger and fear with the same kind of emotion. Um, you may not, you may not change minds, but you can also kind of like dodge it a bit, like water. Um, and then also the, the other thing that's maybe not so serious is that I do not, I, I, I had no idea of the realm of marketing that, because that's not what I do as a, in my profession, I'm a teacher and I, I would go into some rooms and people were talking about marketing. I'm like, Oh my goodness, this is so boring. I hate it. And I would leave. But then I was, then I got curious. I'm like, this could really help out what we do. And that's where I met half of the people that I, I, I listen to every single day as their genius marketers. And so instead of being, you know, close minded, I did, I became curious and really good friendships have resulted from that and also growth for everything that we do with Bunsen and Beaker. Thanks. Hey, Jay, hey Jason, I got to just remind me, I'll, I'll send you an article I wrote called the nobility of marketing. I love it. <laughs> okay. Love sounds it. good. <laughs> Who the host like to jump in? Go ahead. I'd like to build on what yeah, you this said. Uh, oh. This is Indra Bartona here. Yep. Okay. Um, yeah, sorry. It's Indra Bartona here. Uh, George, I, I love the idea of uh, curiosity. And, uh, and with curiosity, um, I just want to build on that by going a little bit further and saying, Please. there are so many things in our life that are out of our control curiosity is something that is within our control and as well as curiosity uh, acceptance is something that is an amazing process for all of us sometimes sometimes, sometimes because sometimes. because there isn't an opportunity to control everything else to control the external other people's perspectives sometimes when we just move to a point of acceptance, then we also automatically open our minds, open our hearts. Uh, it's just a whole new perspective that we can take on. And that doesn't mean that we have to agree with 100%, but it's almost, almost like an agree to disagree or it's just there. And if I want it, I can take that option because I'm not fighting against it or I'm not creating um, a barrier in my mind. Mm. So, so that's what I love about building on the curiosity foundation is you can move to a point of acceptance and there's no uh, barrier. There's nothing that's holding us back. It's just pure free choice of information and virtually unity with that person as well. Yeah, Andrew, you made me, re made me realize or you reminded me that you, you don't learn from the people you agree with, right? That's you right. learn from the people you disagree with. You Absolutely. Learn from, and, and, oh, I, and I'll post, I have, I, I intended to post it. Uh, I'll post in the, in the, I don't, uh, I don't in think the, it's, in, 
I don't think it's will... as simple as that, you know, yeah. agree or disagree. I think it's, you know, there's sure. this, this um, feature, you know, this thing that we're, we're built with, which is curiosity, makes us curious and makes us want to learn from other people. And it's a matter of like acceptance. So I can accept that I know less about AI than Dr. M. Um, but I can listen in on her, his space with Dr. Um, Barry and learn a lot. And I, you know, and, and it's sort of uh, an acceptance of who you are. Okay, well, this is who I am now, but we're always growing. And by listening and opening our ears to other people, we can grow, we can continue growing. Mm-hmm. And Here's some and Rev, you, in here. I think Rev was trying to get in. Hmm. Rev, Rev, were you? Were you oh, yeah, actually, in? actually, I was. Actually, I was, but however, this is a revolution. But what I did, I, I, we can go past that. But what I did want to say quickly is I just said it in the chat. This is to the team, everybody. We can't all grab the mic, obviously, at once, but we can all be active in the chat. Get that chat lively. Back to you, George. Okay. Who is, I think Samantha was trying to get in, or I'm not sure. Yeah, Samantha Postman here. I think that when we talk about strengths and differences, we often think of like black or white, or there's like this line where it's either a strength or it's a weakness, or we agree or we disagree. And in fact, what I found is that we are all on continuums. It's like even when people do those Myers-Briggs, you know, you're not all the way 100% on one side. You're usually on a continuum, but then depending on once you cross a line, you're considered in one particular category. But in fact, you mm -hmm. could be really close to middle ground and really close to the what we would call the uh, another category. So mm -hmm. when we look at strengths and weaknesses, I think it's important to think of each of us are on a continuum. It's not a side. It's a continuum. And that when we speak to each other, the, the, what we can do is think, I'm willing to move on that continuum one way or another, depending on more information that I accumulate from other people who, are diff who think differently and have different perspectives than I do. So the goal of a discussion is for one of us to, for, for us to move on that continuum in growth. And that's the most important in any conversation. Instead of thinking of strengths and differences, it's what can we add to each other? And what can I let go of myself that's not that's not true anymore that I realize the new information has has made untrue? And that's something that Leonardo da Vinci did. Mm -hmm. He quite often would just let go of information once the new information replaced it. And it, and it was um, true. Like we do this in medical, right? What we used to believe five years ago is all of a sudden they're like, well, that's actually not even true science. It's just what they believed at the time with the information they had. So it's a continuum of growth. Samantha, this is George. You mentioned the magic word perspective, and I know you have a, a talk on how photography teaches us different perspectives. I posted in the nest, and by the way, any speaker should absolutely feel free to uh, post anything they want in the nest without permission in this in, the, in, in these sessions, because we all know each other, we've vetted each other, we're not gonna do nonsense. So uh, so I just put up in the nest, she mentioned Leonardo da Vinci, uh, he believed very strongly that you cannot know something unless you look at it from several different perspectives. And in the beginning of his anatomy books, his, his anatomy drawings, he said, I will, he said the equivalent of, and I can't say it in Italian, so I'll give you the English, uh, paraphrasing, uh, he said that you you don't know something unless you can see it from three or more different views. So in all the drawings that I pre uh, that I present here, and he wasn't just talking about his drawings, he was talking about life, in all the drawings that I present here, I will show you at least three views, top, bottom, and side, but more more if needed. And so I... And I read that when I was a teenager, and I said, Jesus, you know, I'm, I'm going to take that to heart. I don't understand something unless I have at least three different viewpoints. Then I can say, okay, George, you're beginning to understand it. Yeah, like I in photography, know. I say that, uh, Samantha here, in photography, when I, I do, I've done a keynote speech on it, and I talk about the different lenses. You know, we'll use a macro lens to see super close, and then we'll mm -hmm. use one that's more realistic, and then we can use a, a zoom lens, or uh, we can use a wide angle lens to get the full picture. And that's three different perspectives just yeah. by changing the lens on your camera. So when we think of ourselves as a camera body, which lenses am I putting on to see different perspectives? I mean, that's just one, that's not looking at from and three dimensional and, or two and relates to what Indra was saying about right. the that, that you're that you're you have control over your curiosity. So if you think of your curiosity as a camera, as Samantha was expressing it, or as a flashlight, 
that zooms narrow versus wide, you know, floodlight to pinpoint, uh, you have control over that curiosity. You And if you seek out the differences, the anomalies, the strange things, the holy shits, you know, that kind of stuff, that that's where you learn. You don't learn from what a, what you agree with. That's Seek out the holy that. shits, folks. Remember <laughs> that. <laughs> no, this this make this is Michael. This makes me think of um, you know, you've seen those photos or the videos online where, like, the camera starts at a thing and you see a picture of the Mona Lisa, but then right. the camera starts to move to the left and there's all these things in a three dimensional sculpture that only when you stand in one position and see it from one angle does it look like the Mona Lisa. But there's a whole lot in a whole lot of dimensions that makes up that photo. And that's kind of like how people are and how opinions and ideas are too. Yeah, that was a great example. I, so I, I, I said this to, a, to a, an art expert once, I don't get the smile in the Mona Lisa. I look at that smile and it's not there. And he said to me, look at her hair, look just to the right or the left of her mouth. You guys do this. Try this. Go, go get a picture of the Mona Lisa. Look to the right or left, probably her hair or the background next to it. You will see the smile. You won't see the smile staring at the lips. You will see. But so my curiosity about it got me something I learned from it. Anyway, that's interesting example. Jump in, folks. Revolution again. Just, I think that every single person just jumping in real quick. Well, uh, I, I think Rev was first for, by a split second. Go ahead, yeah, Rev. sorry. I'm just taking care of house business here. Sorry, oh. folks. Just enjoy the, the sausage making. Pay attention, team, to the back channel. That's our back channel DM. Communicate in there. I'm out. Okay, thanks. Samantha? Well, I'll just add this and, and then let the conversation go. Is this like, think of every single person has a different camera body and then each of them have different makes and models. So if I'm a Nikon, someone else could potentially be like a Canon. Well, when we stand next to each other, we can be taking a picture of the exact same uh, subject matter, but the camera processes of them differently and will render the picture slightly different, maybe sharper, maybe softer, maybe more contrast, maybe more color. And so each of us is like a different camera body and a different make and model. And so mm -hmm. um, that's just one way to help when we're speaking with people going, oh, okay, they're a different camera body and they're using a different lens. I need to look at that with fascination and curiosity. And you can learn something from the mm -hmm. differences. So you learn something from a macro lens. You literally see things you didn't see before. You, and, and a telephoto lens, you also see things that you didn't see before. And imagine I, our, um, and imagine Rose has definitely a perspective on <laughs> taking different viewpoints as a journalist. Whoops, I, I'm sorry, I hit the mute Here. button by mistake. Yeah, Rose, you're yeah. okay. Go ahead. Yeah, hi, it's Rose. Uh, yes, always. Uh, I think that anytime, you know, just you know, basic rule. You're doing a story. You know, you you always get two opinions, or you get three, uh, and that's not to say, you know, it's a ping pong match and, and, you know, but it's, it's you, it's, you have to learn from people who have different opinions and you're, you know, you do bring perspective. It's not objective, you know, it's not completely objective. You're listening, you're gathering, you're analyzing and then coming up with what you think the story should be about. Mm -hmm. I love I, it. Uh, I, yeah. Go ahead. Well, All I was right. just going to say, this is Daryl with the dashes. I was just going to say that, you know, data, uh, data points, all of these things are not necessarily truth, uh, capital T truth, you know? And right. so you have to, you have to be willing to understand that, yes, three points of view isn't always going to get you to the truth even. Uh, they could be right. skewed as well. And so when we commingle emotion at all to, or a grip to our emotion with the fact or the information of the data, that's where we go awry because it's really a letting go. It's really getting active into the passive and trusting the process that I am just passive, but I'm very active into the passive. And I'm very actively allowing the letting go to journey me to the truth, the capital T truth that is 
you know, forever going to be true. And so I don't think we do that enough in our critical thinking. And I think that we commingle our emotions uh, too much uh, to outcomes and the data points to kind of fulfill the outcome that we desire versus the truth that is actually going to elevate us. Could you elaborate on what you mean by the passive to the active? What I mean by that is strength is sometimes letting go. And so sometimes it is where we let go of our emotional attachment. Uh, it is where we let go of our control over a situation where things start to reveal themselves, people's true intentions, people's uh, their their ideas, right? And so when you let go and you get very active in the idea that, yes, I'm letting go with an intention to see what data starts to emerge so that I can really take a solid action once I actually get clear of what's in that situation. And so sometimes that strength in letting go is a process that really masters start to teach about is where is it that we can use that um, high activeness to the passive letting go and watch what reveals itself through that process. Well, mm. it's, thank you. Uh, interesting. Uh, just just to apply it to, to the way some of us might work is that when you might understand something through data and through, through a lot of knowledge, you know, I always stop myself and say, okay, well, how would I explain this to my neighbor next door. <laughs> That's you know? the crux of science, <laughs> Jason. Right. <laughs> yeah. So, so you have to be, even even in your head, if you have it all figured out. Well, you don't know if you really have it figured out until you try to explain it, so that everyone can can understand that. Uh, so you you know you're both in your strength, but you're you're communicating your strength. Rose, it's Mariah here, and I think it's so important to go back to Samantha's point in filling the gaps and that being the focus as we build or collaborate or what you have it. Because if we don't, then you know, you're know you not building on a solid foundation or you could be duplicating um, deficiencies. You get mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So you have to make sure that the end goal is to fill the holes and to recognize that there are gaps and move forward there Ooh, i like that this That's is jason mm -hmm. <laughs> what do you like what do you like about it jason um it's been my experience in starting spaces um i tried to do everything myself and when you try to do everything yourself uh you can't there's nobody that can do everything themselves and by listening to people that know more than me about marketing for example about technology you grow, you have to be humble. And I love that, like filling each other's gaps, Samantha, and then Mariah's comment on that. that I love that a lot. Mm -hmm. um, one thing I was just going to quickly mention was I, it may also be your life experience. Uh, so for the AI experts in our group, my only experience with AI for the longest time was the Terminator movies. And I was terrified of AI. I was like, no, I don't want AI. I don't want to get Skynet to come and murder my whole family and blow up the world. But um, it's, it's not that. <laughs> It's not that. So, <laughs> my reference this point. This revolution too. I... Go ahead. Go. <laughs> All right. I'm just going to just quickly say too, because I would just want to build on what Jason said there too. Around, we, you know, we built a, a successful nonprofit over the past ten years, an amazing organization, and we were. I did it with another person, and I and then we quickly developed a team. This is really hard work to do when you're trying to do this social audio stuff by yourself, and without this team that we have built around us, it would be impossible. I, I, I couldn't do it. I need partners in this. And I feel like I have so many partners and a lot of them are here in this space. Hmm. I want to come back to that team, that team idea, but Mariah, you were trying to get in. Yeah, I was just, it was a, a joke. I was going to tell everyone that my reference point for AI is Star Trek. And um, <laughs> I had, you know, I had to <laughs> come from, right. I'm, I've been waiting on these things to happen for <laughs> a while now and I'm excited about what we can do with artificial intelligence because as long as we stay ethical right and we stay cognizant of what we're building and why we're building it I don't see anything wrong with the future I see mm -hmm. it as beautiful and promising truly mm -hmm. 
This is George. I want to say a couple of things about team building, but before I do that, there's a couple of housekeeping details for those of us who are, for those of you who are, have just joined us. This is a discussion of highly experienced spaces uh, facilitators uh, and other audio, so other social audio. I say spaces, but I, I meant social audio. Um, and uh, we we have a a a, a pre-selected list of people that. Um, we have uh, put up on the speaker so that we're not taking requests at the moment. I apologize to the people who are requesting, uh, but this is not, a, as Jason mentioned at the beginning, you may have missed it, this is not a closed group. Uh, so please, you know, DM Jason or me or anybody else, and we'll, we'll get you on the list and we'll get you in a future discussion. Uh, but this is going so well, I'm just reluctant to, to bring people up at the moment. Let's, let's just continue. Continue on. Uh, I, I, about team building uh, that Rev mentioned, um, I've done a fair amount of team building in my consulting career. And a lot of really smart, the, smart, the smarter of the businesses realize you, you have to have diversity on a team. If you don't, you have a committee. And a committee is designed to uh, dissipate responsibility. But a team is, is there to do something. To, to reach a goal. And um, so there are deliberate people, they deliberately try to get diversity of particularly cognitive styles on teams. So for instance, you will, uh, you need to have a gadfly on the team. Someone who, that annoying person who sits there and tells you what's wrong with every idea. But the team has to be but everybody has to recognize that, that that's the person's role. And when you're brainstorming, that person has to shut up or go into a different mode than, than gadfly. Because if you're pointing out what's wrong with every idea in the middle of brainstorming, you shut it down. In fact, it's prohibited in the, in the process of brainstorming. So you need to understand what everybody's role and everybody's style is and what their strengths and their weaknesses are and deliberately try to seek out people who are different with you, not only different opinions, again, different styles, different ways of coming at things, different, different skill sets in problem solving. All of that stuff, if you deliberately build in those differences or that diversity, you will strengthen the team incredibly. Because a team of individualists who are really thinking for themselves in their own style, that's a strong team. A weak team is one where everybody is deferring to each other and being nicey nice and stroking each other and getting nothing done. Well, I think Dr. Dr. Barry uh, was going to jump in. So I'm going to be the gadfly and say, let's go to her. <laughs> cool. I was gonna earlier point, but I think uh, George uh, pivoted the conversation to something essential. for success. And one example I can give is working with a, a group of uh, uh, team members building for one common goal, which was to build this quadruped robotic system. Uh, usually when we think of robotics, you probably just think of, uh, you know, computer scientists, people who program, a few people who do a hardware. But uh, we had data scientists on a team. We had people from mechanical uh, engineering, biomedical engineering, uh, all, all focused on this one particular uh, system. Mm -hmm. And we needed that because every engineer has their own thought process into how to build their from their respective discipline. And uh, with that, we were able to, like Samantha said, fill in the gaps of, you know, what are we missing as a computer scientist, as a programmer myself, you know, there's only so much or a limited amount of uh, insight that I can bring uh, to that robot. And did you have at least, did you have at least one polymath on the team? This is George. Uh, I think we were polymaths. I think so, most of us were polymaths. Most of you were. Okay. I didn't know That's it. good. <laughs> team of poly, nothing better than a team of polymaths. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we were polymaths but just at, at the time. Um, but you know, I think it's it goes along with the uh, the the pathline for us or the pipeline uh, for us to create something great from a team of people that come from very different uh, uh, backgrounds and, and foundations. And it just goes to show that you can mesh together with all those different characteristics to build something phenomenal in the end. And I think with this space that we're doing right now, just having 
uh, conversation, we're doing exactly that. Mm -hmm. and just jump this is Michael, uh, but it's other people can go ahead. That's fine. Go ahead, Michael. Oh, I was going to say, just to piggyback on that, I, it makes me think of the whole Apollo 13 scenario where like they had to literally, correct me if I'm wrong, people who know this better than me, but like they literally had to fig figure out how to connect a round hose to a square port with the things that were on Apollo at the time. And like, it, it, you know, they had to have some engineer at NASA who came up with the idea. And if you have a bunch of people in the room who are all thinking the same way, you're probably not going to get the person who's going to figure out how to connect the round hose to the square <laughs> thing. And so you want that diversity for problem solving. Uh, I mean, it, yeah, solving problems yeah. is so much more it's so much better when you have more people in the room because somebody's going to have the idea that's going to solve that problem. Exactly. This is a revolution. Michael, imagine yes, that exactly. the um, that at NASA it wasn't just that squat the round hole square peg. It's a it's a it's a, a multi minute delay in in the thinking and getting the information out there, and it just really reinforces. We lost the uh, reinforces good what? communication. Communication. Uh huh. Re it reinforces the oh, need for good communication. Here. We're losing Rev's wisdom. Yeah, well, yeah, I think he said it reinforces the need for good communication. Yep, so, those so, those so, Mars so, rovers land uh, before we know they've landed because it's a six right. minute delay. Yep, yep. So you want somebody on a team that. Kind of, maybe they're experts, but they're not experts in that area, so they can ask the stupid questions. And it's the stupid questions. Amen. It's the stupid questions that get the best answers. The quote in big quotes, gigantic quotes around the word stupid, of course. So and Samantha here, I, I was just going to add one element to this that we haven't really talked about is within people who have a certain strength, it's important to have people who have a range in that strength. So that's where mentorship happens. Because sometimes what I've seen with teams is we're busy with trying to get such diversity that we forget that sometimes we need, uh, we need, a, we need a, a strength with people who are really, really, really strong in the area. And then people who are just coming about it are just coming into their own in the area. So what's powerful about that is that Obviously, the person with experience has got a lot to value, but the, the new person, one, is going to ask sometimes the dumb questions and get the experienced person to think back to the basics again. Beautiful. But yep. then also, the um, the young usually it's a younger one and an older one, generally speaking, not always, but the younger one has other skills to bring to the game, like understanding tech, understanding social media, understanding how the culture is. And so within the department of strengths, if you will, if we're looking for people who are really strong in science, for example, or in medicine, I'll use medicine, then we want a range of people who are strong in medicine as well. So I think I just want to add, it's important for diversity, but also for a range in this, in the, in the areas of which, what problems we're trying to solve. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, okay. you know, I in, in problem solving is directly an advantage, right? So, um, like, uh, Dr. Barry here was saying, um, in that project, so as a varied of the fields that you have contributing to trying to come up with solutions really, um, uh, to any problem, uh, it's directly a strength. So the, 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 team with the um, most diversity of talents and backgrounds, or you could say um, yep. the team with the most polymath is most likely to come up with the best solutions. Exactly. Absolutely. And it's Mariah. That, that's been sh shown over back. and over again. Go ahead, Mariah. I just want to go circle back to Dr. Jasmine's point and really what I feel <laughs> what she was going to dig into about AI and how important it is for us to have as many builders, engineers, thought leaders from all backgrounds across the board as we're building into these machineries. And I really, really would appreciate if she would elaborate because I know that's <laughs> what she wanted to speak about. Go ahead. Oh, you to, uh, yeah, thank you, Mariah, for uh, that point. Uh, I was really, you know, what actually came to my mind uh, was thinking about generalist versus specialist uh, during this conversation, mm -hmm. which I forgot the name of the uh, the guy who, uh, you know, created a theme out of this uh, and started publishing books around this topic. But it, it goes to show, you know, how do you weigh the advantages of, you know, generalizing about, you know, various topics versus only specializing in certain ones. And he kind of made the relationship between that and some of the greatest athletes that we have ever known. You know, a lot of them didn't start out, uh, you know, 
uh, when they were two years old or four years old, only playing that particular sport. Uh, they diversified their task by playing a variety of sports, uh, playing, uh, you know, uh, maybe playing tennis, golf, and, you know, eventually they led into uh, basketball. And uh, those foundational skills that they learned earlier on helped them create an actionable set of skills that made them more competitive than everyone else in their field. And I think we're absolutely doing that here is, you know, how are we changing? our dynamics of how we interact and uh, Mariah about the blockchain and Rev about his perspective and insight and uh, technically with the algorithms that I'm, I'm building there. So, uh, you know, to Mariah's point, I think uh, we need to learn that team building is effective, learn how to mesh together our, our insights and our talents in a way that uh, is unprecedented. And I'm looking forward to, to doing that uh, in the best way possible. Hello, this is Indra here. Uh, I wanted to jump in on something that was mentioned earlier, and I think that uh, Samantha was talking about teams. And uh, it was something that I really found interesting is that the more I step back, uh, even with uh, working with my movie team, the current uh, movie that we're in development with, and I know we're shifting topics here, we're talking about AI, but I actually think that AI and science is very creative as well. It's so creative. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, but, um, but the more that I actually step back and let the team lead uh, in, in, even in the movie development phase, the more that I see them just uh, enjoying the process, more and more ideas come forward. And actually, I have to say that uh, I'm actually surprised at how much I learn as well along the way from taking a step back and allowing the team. And it's a mix of some people are very, very specialised in their fields and we actually need that balance. And then um, I'm more sort of over the top, all different types. You know, I can I can understand the accounting piece. I can understand the the creative piece with the writers, uh, but it's just so amazing to watch them flourish and to step back and to be in a form of in a state of acceptance. And then uh, what um, what Daryl said mentioned later earlier was about um, letting go. So when you're in that state of acceptance, then you can kind of step back and let go. And that's when I've really seen the team flourish. Even, even when you initially disagree with them. Yes. Right? Even when yes. you initially say, yeah, I wouldn't do it that way. But if you <laughs> step back a little bit and let them do it their way, Wow. That is, this is Jason, that is a dangerous thing to tell high school kids on an open-ended <laughs> science project. I wouldn't yeah. do it that way. You know, because that's you're going to be proved wrong and you're going to look real dumb in front of a whole bunch of kids. So That so is what? funny. Yeah, framework, <laughs> funny. framework and mission, right, is so important. Like as a CEO of a company or a founder, uh, this is Daryl with the dashes, hit the ball guy up here with the headphones. <laughs> um, so yeah, I mean, framework and mission, right, is very, very important. And But that doesn't necessarily need to be tied to emotion, right? When we tie and commingle emotion to our decision-making or an analysis of the data points and all of that, that's where we literally slap ourselves upside the head and put us mm -hmm. into dangerous territory. It's really that openness. It's really that ability to just say, I let go of who I thought everything was. And I'm just going to be like, uh, like George, you said, very curious. And I'm very, very open. So yeah, that's what I was trying to refer to. Yeah, building on what Daryl said is George. Uh, it, it, it's all, especially when emotions are involved. It's, it, it comes down when we have differences. I like to go to the where does my curiosity lead me to the evidence you look at what's the evidence and we all know evidence can be highly misleading i know this is a magician also there are a lot of things that are very misleading so you have to look at the evidence very carefully and it changes reality changes uh your the belief that you had yesterday might not be true today not because the belief was wrong yesterday it may have been right yesterday, 
but it is wrong today because reality has changed. So you, a lot of it is a matter of when we have dif differences, you know, gun control, uh, abortion, uh, all these big issues that everybody's killing themselves over and practically going get into fistfights over, you go, what's the evidence? What are we trying to, what's the problem we're trying to solve here? What well, wonderful, we have differences. We, we believe in diametrically opposed things. Fine, terrific, that enriches us. Let's look at the evidence and see what we can make of it and see what, what kinds of solutions we can come up with. Not whether we're right or George, wrong. George, this is Michael. Yeah, yeah and, and, and Sorry, that's, that's all well and good, but we've seen recently in politics that you know, people can be shown all kinds of mountains of evidence of course, that something is a certain way, and they yep. feel... They know that, but they, it feels wrong. It feels yeah. like something isn't right, that, that the wool's being pulled over their eyes. And so that's one of the things I've been thinking about a lot recently in the last couple of years is like, how do we merge and, and find balance between what we know about the evidence and what we feel about the situation? Because a lot of times those don't line up. Thanks a lot. This is Michael. Yeah. Yeah, Michael. yeah, this is uh, Dr. Emma. I was just going to uh, take this back to what George originally said. You know, he said that um, when you encounter something that um, you don't uh, personally agree with, the um, the way to approach it is uh, curiosity. So um, uh, I think it's that approach that kind of um, determines your reaction, whether it's going to be getting defensive um, and, uh, you know, getting on the attack and thinking of, uh, you know, that way versus um, trying to learn more because, in terms of disagreements, I mean, there is two situations when you encounter one, right? One is that the person is intentionally trying to deceive you. That's not the case most of the time. And then the other case is that they are um, telling you what they believe. And so the right approach is to find out why it is that um, that they feel and they think what they, what it is that they that they do. Um, because um, uh, so long as they're not intentionally trying to deceive you, you yourself would uh, say. Uh, feel and think the same things had you um, walked in their path and, and come to where they are. So I think it's that um, uh, approach, basically approaching something that you don't agree with from a perspective of curiosity rather than um, getting defensive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Hey, George, this is Revolution. I'm grabbing the reins real quick, everybody. Just yeah. hang on one second. We're coming up at the top of the hour. I know Jason might have a couple of things to put in there real quick. I also just want to make sure that we are acknowledging the folks on Clubhouse, on Wisdom, on LinkedIn, that we're saying hi to you. Okay. We love you. And, yes. uh, and you know, there are ways to make comments in there and pay attention. But we're coming up at the top of the hour, boss, uh, there, George. And uh, so, yeah, we might – we've got – oh, please also, everybody, group team, pay attention to the back channel. People also, are saying things to, in there that, that are pertinent. Right. I wanted to pick up on what Revolution said in the back channel, which was he suggested uh, – Bring some people up for feedback on their experiences, Lis listeners. I think this is probably the time to do that, if if um, if you people don't don't mind. Well, what, uh, I, I would like to about, add some speakers some and, and go ahead, Rose. Sorry. Uh, what about a few questions from people listening? Then then just their comments on what what we're talking about. Yeah, yeah just, actually, okay, Dr. J has a really good observation, um, and in in the chat on Twitter. And she says, I'm seeing the differences of inter interdisciplinary perspectives expanded in real time for deeper learning. And then she says, kudos to the group with a heart. But I really like that. That's exactly what this is. And Dr. J, I felt like you really expressed it very well. Hmm. I wanted to, uh, I saw Marie, um, Mariah wanted to say something and then I'll just do, maybe you all make a decision what the next step is. So sure. I know Mariah, you were trying to get in there. Yeah, I just wanted to circle back, it's Mariah here, circle back to George, Michael, Dr. M, and Rev's point, and oh. really get to the heart of it all in it being that we not take things personally. If we're going to actually assess anything at all to move forward objectively, you Good can't. Point. And yeah. if that's where we start, then there's there's nothing left but to grow. Exactly. Just, yes. If, if it's you. personal, if it's personal, there's no growth. It's just go ahead, Rose. Sorry. Uh, great point. I was listening to his face yesterday with um, through ClickUp, which is a software platform, and there were a few women in tech uh, who were talking about what to do uh, ahead. And one of them said that the more you know, be 
fuel yourself with data, you know, have the data and that way, you know, have the analysts, have, you know, have all the data, have all that at the ready. And then for yourself, if it's rejected, you know, you've done your work. Mm -hmm. So I think that's a really good point as we talk about, uh, you know, curiosity and, and, and this idea of not, uh, taking it personally and, and in a way in, in, if you look at the political situation it's really hard to understand um, you know we have all this evidence about gun control and yet we haven't had gun control uh, and uh, Chris Murphy of Connecticut Senator Chris Murphy said after you know how did how did it feel after waiting 10 you know 10 years after uh, the new, new Newtown shootings to finally get some legislation and he said I, I was ready to start at the very beginning. I was ready to take whatever I could to try to build that agreement on gun control. Mm. Okay, uh, okay, Rose, thank you. That was a great point. Um, I'm just going to go through a couple of the comments and uh, echo what Rev said. This this little chat wasn't meant to go on for hours and hours. And because there's so many of us, um, you only got a little taste of what everybody here has to offer. And remember, we all, all of us on the stage who are speakers today, we all run rooms and spaces that you can check out. You can all follow us to find out more. Um,